Hello guys, Zyga here, and welcome back to another Project Jude episode. Now, I have some awesome things to show you in this video, but before I start, this video is sponsored by Core. Core is the new free game creation platform that lets you build, publish, and play games. It's a great platform from Game Jams, especially if you want to quickly set up a 3D multiplayer game. You can get started making games right away using thousands of free, high-quality music, sound, and art assets, with no coding required. But, if you'd like to get more nerdy with it, Core still lets you create your own game logic in Loire. You can build games from scratch or remix and reimagine content shared by other creators. And when you're ready to publish, your game will go live instantly on the Core platform with a click of a button. You can download Core for free at www.coregames.com or use the link in the description below. It's completely free and I suggest you go ahead and check it out and see if you like it. I'm sure you will because I definitely did. Anyway guys, let's get into the video. So, I've been lying in this bed a lot. I've also been sitting in that chair a lot. Which means I have back problems now. Yeah, that was my week. Now you might ask, how does this correlate to anything else? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Apart from the fact that I've been lying in this bed because I'm so lazy and have no motivation to work on my game, but then I force myself to sit on that chair during the nights, getting no sleep and hurt to my back. <laughs> what is my life? So I started filming this like an hour, half an hour ago, but I can't count anymore. And I've realized that what I did in the game isn't even good or epic, and yeah, I don't even know if it's interesting, but I'm going to show you what I've done, because I'm going to show you what it's actually really like to live as a game developer who has no motivation and no self-esteem. Let's begin. So to me, settings are cool. I feel like settings are definitely the best part of a game, because you know, you see them and you're just like really excited about it. I can't even make settings sound cool. It's such a boring thing. Oh god. Anyway, settings, right? Yeah, I, they're in my game now. Now, you may be wondering, why add settings to the game and why not add anything else? Well, because I like making pretty UI, okay? I'm gonna be honest, I'm just a UI-aholic. Yeah, that's a new word, UI-aholic. If you're a UI-aholic, slap that like. Also, so I started this week by going ahead and fixing a ton of problems that my Unity had, and no, these problems weren't caused by my code, it was all because of Unity, because Unity is dumb. I was having issues with the package manager and a bunch of stuff with it, and the SDK was missing, the JDK, and I wasn't even making an Android game, so why the hell was it missing? Either way, I had to go ahead and reinstall Unity about five times, it didn't work. I promise it didn't freaking work. I then went ahead and reinstalled it a sixth time because I'm being dumb, thinking that it would work. But well, it wouldn't work. My project got basically corrupted, so then I had to transfer all of my files and my scripts and all of the stuff into a new project. Thankfully, I had a lot of backed up. <sighs> I then had to go ahead and recreate a ton of stuff once again, so all of that six week progress was for nothing. Six week, what am I on about? I'm on like two weeks. What the hell am I even on about? I'm a really unlucky person when it comes to Unity, I think, because I swear to god every single time I open up the damn program it breaks. Like, no joke. I had to reinstall Unity five times at least and it still broke. <sighs> anyway, why am I saying anyway? <laughs> it's not anyway, it's freaking annoying. But what happened was, my Unity broke, it broke my game, but don't worry, I didn't have to start from scratch, I was able to import most things into a new brand new project. So what did I actually do? Oh yeah, the settings. I started by making a blank new scene and started adding some text and images, most of which were made on my Surface Pro, because I'm a pro. With the main graphics set up, I created a very simple script that would control the navigation on the main menu. I also made some animations and sounds to make it feel better. To accomplish all of this, I watched a tutorial by Thomas Brush, so go check the man out. It didn't take long, but now we have this, a simple looking main menu. However, I would like to add controller support to my game, so I had to change some of the scripts to allow a controller to navigate the screen too. Thankfully, this didn't take too long. With that finished, I hooked the buttons up to actually work, so now when you press new game, it loads the main scene up. By the way, this won't be the scene that you actually load in, this is just for test purposes. And when you press quit, you quit. I then made another new scene called settings. I could make it all on the same scene, but I prefer when things look cleaner. On here, I set up a similar looking UI to fit the theme. I also used the same button logic as from before and hooked it up so that depending on what you have selected, different settings will appear. This was done with a simple game object active. With everything visually set up, it was time to make some actual settings options and make the logic for that. But I don't know what settings people like to change, so I most definitely 100% spent hours of research to see what settings people like to change, and definitely didn't just open one game for a reference. Ha. Now the first menu I made was controllers. 
I made it visually appealing to the user to see what buttons control what. I also made a nifty little system that detects whether you're using keyboard, a mouse, or controller. I made a little footer that displays what controls you use in the settings page. Once again, it changes depending on the device that you are using. So currently, I have a, um, a keyboard plugged in right here, and it's showing me the controls for my um, keyboard and mouse, right? But if I plug this controller in, this one right here, it will show me something else. So let me just show you this. So my controller is now plugged in. You can see the cable there and you can see it leading into my keyboard. And bam, we have the controls for the controller set up now. Then on the audio page, I made a few sliders that control the volume of different audios. By the way, all of these save so you don't have to change it every time you launch the game. On the video page, I made a resolution option where you can change the resolution of the game. I straight up added every resolution that I could find on Google. Um, I mean, every resolution that I could think of myself. I also made a full screen option and a simple button that will apply the settings. On the graphics page, I made a little brightness bar, a quality setting, a texture quality setting, and a shadow setting. The page also has an anti-aliasing option, a soft particles, and a real-time reflection option. By the way, all of these are functional and I will be adding more options later on in the game. Finally, on the game settings page, I added only two options so far, one that disables or enables a little FPS counter thingy, and one that changes your sprint to toggle or hold. Here you can see the FPS thingy, and here you can see the different sprints. Oh, I also forgot to mention the settings page is also in the main game, so when you press escape or the options button on the PS4 controller, a setting page will open up that pauses the game and allows the player to change the settings. I also made it that when you open these settings in game, your mouse will appear, but when you close them, your mouse will disappear. Pretty simple. So after creating these awesome settings, I figured, you know, why not let's like ask my friends and family what they think about it. All right, let's go. Hannah, so what do you think of my settings? Wow, that's bad. So what do you think of my settings? It's bad Amy still. So what do you think of my settings? <laughs> okay. Okay, Avery, what do you think of my settings? Uh so Gabby, I don't I don't really know how to say this, but they kinda suck. So apparently everyone hates my settings. Great. I just spent hours trying to get this to work. Wait, what? Not even hours, I spent days. Days, I spent literal days trying to get it to work. Great. So at this point, I decided to stop working on the settings and get some work done on other parts of the game because working on the settings got a little bit boring. Firstly, I added a controller support to the game. So basically you can use a PS4 controller now to control your character. This wasn't that difficult to do. I just needed to make some extra inputs on the Unity input page and set it up in a script. Pretty simple. But yeah, basically you can use a PS4 controller in my game, which is pretty cool, I guess. Um, also, I'm not sure if you can use an Xbox controller right now because I don't have one so I can't test it, but when I get one or when I just borrow my boyfriend's one, I will test it out. I don't think it will work at the moment, however, I will get that sorted out for you guys as well. I also decided to rework the movement just a little bit because before it was okay but it was a little bit janky. It didn't feel that smooth and all. But with a few fixes here and there, and by here and there I mean by a couple hours of work, I managed to get the player movement looking quite juicy and quite nice. So in all honesty you can control the player really nicely and the movement itself feels fun as it should do. And I can't speak nowadays. Anyway, you can use a controller or a mouse. I basically did this in a really simple way. Once again, I used the controller detection thing to see which one you're using. Pretty simple. Finally, I decided to do some changes to the UI for the health and the stamina, which will actually be um, the energy bar thingy for the powers. But it's looking kind of bad right now and I will be reworking it. But I'm that sort of person that needs to work on UI for ages to get it, you know, looking good. Because remember, I'm a UI-aholic, just like you should be. And yeah, that's basically all I did in this video. And I think it's pretty cool. It looks alright. I think I'm mostly proud of the settings and the different kind of options that I did, because I actually made it work. And I forgot to mention earlier for the settings page, I basically made a system that is reusable so I can use the system whenever and it's really easy to add more options. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. If so, leave a like, subscribe and comment down below. Thank you to my Patreons Nicole Dans and Noob247365. If you'd like to support me and all of my work, there's a Patreon link down below. 
Thank you for watching. Also, don't forget to check out Core. It's completely free. Just visit coregames.com or click the link in the description below.